Hey, what's up? It's Mike Hill Metal, and I'm back to playing some Kerbal Space Program. And this is my Ragnar high capacity vehicle. I found it on the forums. It's called Taurus HCV, and the internals just came out, so now I got uh, IVAs. And there's the top level, and this is the bottom level. And right now, I'm going to be launching these seven Kerbals up to the transport core. That's going to be taking them to lathe. And I flew this entirely manually. Didn't even put Mac Jeb on the side. Don't need it. The one thing that I do wish is that there was a slightly smaller engine for this. Because, as you see in a minute when I drop this first stage... to put this giant ass second engine on here and use the thrust limiter and put it at like 30 percent which is okay but I would rather have a slightly smaller engine that I could run at about a hundred go getting the solar panels out I have solar panels and RTGs ready on this thing get this circularized And get this set up with a maneuver node and head on over towards station. And here's me coming into the station for a final docking maneuver. Or transport core, sorry. Uh, it's not the station. The stations are already around Lathe. And that little bloop you just heard is another new mod that I got called uh, Science Something, which tells you when science is available to do experiments. <laughs> Miss that one. Go back, grab on it again. And here's the vehicle going back to Kerbin to get uh, more Kerbals to send back into orbit. We'll see in a second the, the thing will pop back up again for science up by the uh, time warp indicator and coming out so there you go right there uh, where the toolbar is you'll see the glowing one right there that is the new mod that tells you when science experiments are available. And bring it in the dock. Put the final amount of Kerbals on there. As it turns out, it was 10, and I needed to send two on an additional ship. Because what happened was, I had to send this ship that we're looking at right now twice, and the second time I had to do it in three different pieces because the giant docking port, the 2.5 meter docking port, decided it wasn't going to work. And it wouldn't undock while in orbit above Lathe. And you'll see that in a minute. This is, this is me burning the original one towards Lathe and sending all the Kerbals at once. Stop the engines and straighten it out so it doesn't wobble like that. Here's me burning the final maneuver towards lathe. And as you notice, I don't do anything with jewel. I just go straight to lathe. Because I can arrow brake and engine brake at the same time. off that burn. Here we are in orbit of Lathe, finally. I'm going to bring it in right above Lathe Station. 
And right about here is when I realized that I couldn't undock them, so I sent all the Kerbals over to the other station. And they waited here for, I think, two years as I sent a <laughs> another core for the station. Because what I was gonna un what I was gonna do is undock the parts that were going to the surface, and then use the the regular part with the engines attached to be the final part to the uh, lay the station. And there's that weird wiggle thing. I don't know what that is, but it looked awesome. And it's about to crash into the water. This was kind of fun. I was I was absolutely sure that I got all the science out of it before I crashed it too because I didn't want I almost left a Kerbal in there too. I I made the burn and then realized I had to get a Kerbal out and uh, fly back to the station with uh, just uh, mono propellant. I had like point one left. I wish I got that on film, but there's there's a couple times that Fraps just did not record when I told it to. And here we go with the final splash. And here's me sending the second core with the two extra Kerbals in it. Here's me docking it into the final position on Lathe Station and beginning the rotation as I switch over. And this is the first one that I lay. This is the science station that I landed there. I didn't get that recorded either. Thanks, Fraps. And here comes the habitat number one. And I'm doing some science, sending it back to Kerbin. So I got like 150 that I could work with when I get back. And there it is popping up. And I'm going to try and land this right next to where that is. So I'm going to pop the chute right now. And a little glitch as it renders in. Chute's open fully. And I'm going to inflate it as it's going down. This was actually on my first try too. I didn't I didn't have to do the quick save stuff this time. And we're going to undock this, these guys. It's going to be Jeb, Bill, and Bob. And we're going to get around the station. Make sure we don't crash in anything. And then we're going to get set up for the re-entry burn. And detach from that section. And here we go, time warp in a little bit. And that just kind of glitched towards me and that kind of scared the crap out of me so I just jumped out of time warp real quick. And here we go. I'm gonna bring this in and open the chutes when I think it's close enough. There we go. And we're going to land pretty close. It's within a kilometer, so that's pretty awesome. I'm going to take Jebediah out, and you notice he doesn't need an EBA helmet. And here he goes planting a flag, which is going to be the Lathe Colony flag. And it says... After the Kraken struck, we prevailed. And he's going to head over and grab all the science he can from all of these before getting inside. So he's going to extend these ladders. Grab all the science. <coughs> Two to go. And there's something wrong with the ladder, so as you'll see in a second, I need to send another science module. 
which I will probably do in the next video, but for right now, I'll show you what I'm talking about. This right here. As you can see, he can't get up on the little walkway that I built. Forgot that I don't have an EVA suit on, so I can't make that jump. And yeah, this sucks. So see you next time.